Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund. I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday, the 29th of October, 2025, and I'm here to give you your fusion news update for the week. One, Energy Department announces fusion science and technology roadmap to accelerate commercial fusion power. Two, CFS leverages DeepMind AI for Spark. Three, Nordic study on siting of fusion pilot plant. Four, world first use of 3D magnetic coils to stabilize fusion plasma. And make sure you stay till the end because as usual, I have a few interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. One, Energy Department announces fusion science and technology roadmap to accelerate commercial fusion power. First up, we have a major milestone for the American fusion sector this week. The US Department of Energy, or the DOE, has officially released its fusion science and technology roadmap, setting a clear path towards commercial fusion energy deployment by the mid-2030s. The roadmap lays out a three-phase build, innovate and grow framework. The build phase focuses on infrastructure, so new test facilities, supply chain capabilities and pilot plant site planning. Innovate targets critical scientific and engineering gaps, from materials that can withstand extreme neutron bombardment to fuel cycle handling, tritium breeding and efficient heat extraction. And finally, GROW aims to create a thriving ecosystem of public-private partnerships and commercial supply chains to deliver full-scale plants. The DOE highlights six technical priority areas. Structural materials, plasma-facing components, confinement systems, fuel cycle management, breeding blankets, and plant integration. Jean-Paul Allen, Associate Director of DOE's Office of Fusion Energy Sciences said, this roadmap provides the strategic foundation for building the scientific, technical, and industrial base needed to ensure American leadership in com commercial fusion on an ambitious timeline. In essence, this roadmap marks a turning point. The United States is no longer treating fusion as an experiment, but as a strategic industrial sector that could provide carbon-free baseload power and geopolitical energy security within the next decade. It should, however, be highlighted that although this roadmap is important, it is also unfunded. Now we have the map, what we really need is the fuel to get moving. 2. CFS leverages DeepMind AI for Spark Next up is a story from Nuclear Engineering International about how artificial intelligence is entering the fusion arena in a major way. Google DeepMind is partnering with FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, to apply AI and machine learning to the complex challenge of plasma control inside next-generation fusion plants. Google already has a vested interest in CFS's timeline, as this collaboration built on a 200 megawatt power purchase agreement signed between CFS and Google earlier this year, and even earlier investment from Google in 2021. CFS is currently building Spark, a compact tokamak based on high temperature superconducting or HDS magnets. It aims to be the world's first magnetically confined plasma device to achieve net energy gain. Controlling Spark's plasma, a swirling 100 million degree soup of ions and electrons, requires sub-millisecond precision and real-time adaptability. DeepMind's role will be to develop fast, accurate reinforcement learning and differentiable simulation systems that can model plasma behavior more efficiently than traditional physics-based solvers and discover real-time control strategies for machines such as Spark. AI can run millions of simulated control experiments in hours, compared to months for full magnetohydrodynamic simulations. Torax is a professional open source plasma simulator that saved us countless hours in setting up and running of our simulation environments for Spark, said Devin Battaglia, Senior Manager of Physics Operations at CFS. The project builds on DeepMind's earlier collaborations with the Swiss Plasma Center, where AI successfully controlled plasma shapes inside a smaller tokamak in real time. Now, CFS and DeepMind are scaling those capabilities for commercial grade technology. Three, Nordic study on siting of fusion pilot plant. Turning to Europe now, our third story comes from World Nuclear News about a new cross-Nordic study led by VTT Technical Research Center of Finland and commissioned by FIA member Novatron Fusion Group, which has taken a closer look at which Nordic country is best positioned to host an early fusion pilot plant. 
The study compared Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden, using more than 30 criteria including grid capacity, regulatory frameworks, public acceptance and research infrastructure. The result? Finland came out on top. Finland's advantage lies in its regulatory readiness. The Finnish government is already revising its Nuclear Energy Act to create a clear licensing path for fusion facilities, aiming for completion by 2027. This could make Finland one of the first countries in the world to have dedicated fusion legislation. Sweden followed closely, leveraging its strong industrial base and public enthusiasm for clean tech innovation. However, Norway and Denmark were found to have outdated regulatory structures, still tied to fission-era frameworks. The European Commission's ongoing work under Euratom aligns well with the report's vision and an early pilot plant siting in Finland or Sweden would also complement the UKAA's STEP programme and the EU's broader push towards a commercial fusion prototype by the 2040s. In short, this study suggests that Finland's proactive regulatory reforms could give it the edge to become Europe's first country to license a commercial fusion facility. It's no coincidence that the Nordic Fusion Forum just ended last week in Helsinki. 4. World first use of 3D magnetic coils to stabilise fusion plasma. Our final story is a press release from the UK, where fusion researchers have achieved a breakthrough that addresses one of the field's toughest engineering challenges keeping fusion plasma stable for longer durations. The UK Atomic Energy Authority, or UKAA, working on the MAST upgrade at Cullum, has successfully demonstrated the world's first use of 3D magnetic coils to fully suppress edge localised modes, or ELMs, in the spherical tokamak. ELMs are sudden bursts of heat and particles from the plasma edge. These can severely damage the internal walls, and traditional 2D magnetic coils could only partially mitigate them. The new 3D coils, also called Resonant Magnetic Perturbation, or RMP coils, allow scientists to twist the magnetic field lines just enough to smooth out instabilities without disrupting the plasma core. Balancing these loads is crucial for the design of future fusion plant diverters, which must survive years of continuous operation. Fulvio Militello, Executive Director of Plasma Science and Fu Fusion Operations at UKAEA, said, I'm delighted with the groundbreaking findings from our team at UKAA. These achievements reinforce the UK's leadership in fusion research and bring us closer to realising fusion as a clean, safe and abundant energy source for the future. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, we have a bonus about Stefan Jakmich being awarded the 2025 Nuclear Fusion Award by the Nuclear Fusion Journal for his paper on Shattered Pellet Injection, or SPI, experiments at the Joint European Taurus, JET. His work validated SPI as a key method for disruption mitigation, helping protect large tokamaks like ITER from damaging plasma disruptions. Secondly, FIA member Tokamak Energy has released the first plasma images from its compact tokamak ST40, taken using a high-speed colour camera and offering a rare visual insight into the internal workings of a fusion device. Click the link below to have a look for yourself. And finally, I have a bonus about FIA member Gauss Fusion, who have published a Conceptual Design Report, or CDR, for its Giga Fusion Power Plant, described as a full blueprint for commercial fusion, including architecture, systems engineering, safety strategy and cost schedule targets. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of these stories or the bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below for you. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.